in this unit today we are going to discuss about the bottlenecks and the shortcomings for the infrastructure development in india we will also study about the alternative viewpoints for infrastructure development so organized tourism in india is a recent phenomena because india's share of the world market is extremely negligible that is only 0.36% of the total tourists of the world come to India. The travel trade has identified several problem areas and offered strategies to overcome these shortcomings. This is what we shall term the mainstream argument since government policies determined by the critique of its policies by the travel trade. As the team of travel writers Rabindra Seth and Dharmaranjan asserts, to ensure great customer satisfaction, the infrastructure which is admittedly weak in every aspect ranging from airports to toilets has to be strengthened. India has been known for its traditional hospitality and personalized services, based on its colonial tradition of Sahib blog and the large labor force. However, what the tourist wants is efficiency and time saving, which only technology can give. The argument is therefore on how to retain the USP, that is, the unique sales proposition, and yet modernize India's tourist product. What the mass tourist wants is also economy along with mass production. A country like India cannot afford to spread its resources for tourism too thinly. To give a value for money, a product that will not be only competitive but also superior will have to look at the following areas. Number 1. The number of destinations to bring to the tourist basket, the tourism map. We have to increase the number of destinations because the already popular destinations are too burdened with over tourism and we need to have new and niche tourism products coming into the tourist map. Number two, the facilitation, the visa regime, the immigration system, the customs, all these things lead to a customer satisfaction that is the tourist experience as a whole in the country. Immigration officers are the first to interact with the tourists when the tourist lands up in India. So there is an imperative need to train immigration officers also on how to deal with the tourists, not act as a policeman but act as a facilitator and serve with smile. Visa of course, India has been doing a great deal of job regarding visa and we have now electronic tourist visa on arrival which is applicable to the tourists coming from 168 countries. So this facilitation will go a great deal in improving the tourist inflow to the country. Number three, the airports and facilities and staff training, the accessibility, the cost of travel to India from all part of the world also needs to have a look. Availability of airports and air services from entry point to tourist destinations and capacity on trunk routes where business travelers compete for space with tourists, airworthiness of our fleet and safety as well as on-time arrival is also to be looked upon. Number four, Roads and surface transport to ensure standard size air conditioned coaches and tourist cars or taxis. Then highways to access tourist attractions, wayside facilities like cafes and restrooms, petrol stations, repair shops, telephones and overnight accommodation. Hygiene in all matters both personal as well as public is also a very great deal of thing to be done. In the various surveys done by the Ministry of Tourism, Government of India, hygiene and cleanliness is at the foremost in the minds of the tourists coming to India. They are skeptical about the hygiene and the overall cleanliness of India as a tourist destination. Number six, accommodation to suit the taste and the pocketbook of a highly segmented demand that ranges from the youth hosteler to the high spenders. Cleanliness and providing western facilities at all the destinations, water and electricity availability, Safety and courtesy are other requirements. Number seven, trade fairs and reciprocal festivals for the promotion of tourism in India and making India an attractive destination for tourists to come. For this, restructuring of the tourism industry, many feel that incentives play an important role. However, experience points out that what matters in the final analysis is the kind of facilities provided to the tourists, whether a backpacker or the upmarket tourist. What is needed for India to take off in the tourist market are available, clean, hygienic and comfortable facilities. This does not require the government's intervention in hotel and travel agency sector, but the provision of smooth surface roads, quality coaches, cars, a clean environment around monuments. These are the ground realities of a good tourist product according to the veterans of the trade. But 
What about income and earnings? How are these ground realities to be achieved? These are pertinent questions to be answered. For this, number one, in a situation where tourism targets are difficult to realize and the earnings from tourism in dollar terms are going down, it is difficult to take appropriate steps in time to improve the product. If we are to achieve the benefits of tourism, we have to ensure a better and balanced spread of the infrastructure. If funds are not forthcoming, then the privatization process can be sped up and foreign investment sought to fill the gap between needs and the resources, which is now being done by the Government of India. Whilst the trade supports the new approach to limit travel circuits, improve airports at tourist destinations, and the introduction of air taxis and private airlines, there are still some areas that they feel have not been studied so far. These are Exempt taxes like road, luxury taxes, etc. imposed by the state governments. The debate over dual tariffs by the hotel industry, especially after the onset of the GST. The hotel industry has been asking a lot of rebates and hotel industry GST has recently been reduced from 28% as the maximum slab to 18% as the maximum slab for 7,500 plus room rate. Medium price and low cost hotels are the need of the day and of course paying guest accommodations like bed and breakfast units and homestays. Lot of companies have come up in India dealing with homestays and alternative accommodation like Airbnb, Make My Trip and all companies which are an online travel space in India have now been taken up the alternative accommodation on a big way. This type of restructuring will help tourism planners to manage travel budgets while covering the lead time required for the infrastructure to catch up. The stumbling block seems to be the issue of hygiene and meals, areas Europeans are not willing to compromise on. Similarly, the trade felt that the support for Air India should not be expressed through a closed sky policy. After the failure of the Visit India year, when a lot of foreign airlines withdrew from Indian destinations, the travel trade was appreciative of the open sky policy of the government, which included chartered operations. In 1993, 605 charters brought in 50,000 tourists and as compared to that, in 2018, almost 2,500 charters came to India, bringing around 2 lakh tourists to the country. Another problem identified by the travel trade is the negative fallout of the term tourist industry. This has repercussions in the Income Tax Act, which denies to tourism services the benefits other services get, like depreciation. Secondly. It raises the power tariff and denies to tourism incentives for energy conservation. Labor unrest, like we had a pilot strike, had also an important role in giving our infrastructure a poor image because we had no alternative. Today, the open sky policy has changed the scenario. The travel trade has also approved the broader outlines of the National Action Plan, the tourism policy of 2002, and of course, we are yet to have a full-fledged policy on tourism since 2002. The states will now provide the infrastructural backup like roads, water, power and security. The private entrepreneur will invest in the services, however, their criticism relates to the over ambitious targets like we keep on saying that we have to double the hotel accommodation in 3 years or we have to double the tourist arrivals within 5 years. But still we've come a long way from 2.3 million tourists coming to India in the year 2000 and now to almost 14.5 million international tourist visits for the year 2018. So we've come a long way, but we should have realistic targets to be met. The reasons for the trade's pessimism is based on the weakness of the infrastructure, absence of sites, the complex bureaucratic procedures to ensure the best use of scarce resources. India does offer a variety of attractions, but it is using its resources very ineffectively. Part of the problem is identified in the shortcomings of the approach adopted to market the tourist products overseas. The literature available is basically stereotyped, which is often out of date. Information gathering and dissemination are highly professional activities which require investment and training. So now with the onset of so much of internet, people bank more on the internet services rather than the stereotype of an out of date literature being made available to them. Just to recollect that at the Thai convention at Hyderabad in 1992, late Padam Shri, Shri Inda Sharma identified the lack of major support from the community and the government as the major bottleneck to the growth of tourism in India. For example, building a canal or a dispensary is more satisfying to the voter. 
to change this situation the need of the hour is to make everyone believe that tourism is a national asset it is a big money spinner it is a big industry and it gets you the third largest foreign exchange in the country as a fallout of the convention tourism the highly competitive convention business opportunity has not been realized because of the need of a requisite infrastructure for example the convention of the united nations conference of parties brought about more than 15000 delegates to india but such type of convention could only be held in delhi or in hyderabad because they have the required infrastructure so to bring in more and more convention tourism to india we require facilities of a convention city although haryana had offered an 80 acre site near the international airport way back in the late 90s the convention complex is still to come up and barring delhi or hyderabad we lack in convention cities wherein we can host more than 10000 delegates coming to india it requires a massive auditorium with the latest technology committee rooms attached hotels shopping plazas communication centers entertainment centers medical centers etc however at the moment such facilities would have long periods of non use which would entail high maintenance and replacement costs clubs and weekend retreats can play a small role in overcoming these problems the travel trade has also raised the issue of infrastructural weaknesses in unique ecosystems and for adventure sports the thar desert the himalayan region the northeast have been identified as unique geographical areas which have remained undeveloped because of difficult terrain and security reasons now that the inner line restrictions have long been removed improvement of the infrastructure and accessibility of these destinations is underway with extension of the airports the udan scheme coming into picture new accommodation units promotion to bed and breakfast unit promotion to homestays rafting adventure tours and so on the heritage town concept is bringing infrastructural improvement to the south of india This involves conservation and protection of archaeological and architectural sites present in a large number of towns and villages. The planning also involves the provision of public amenities for tourists and pilgrims. Heritage hotels are a spin-off from this concept and are very popular in states like Rajasthan. The towns which are included are like say Mamalapuram, Kanchipuram, Chidambaram, Kanyakumari, Rameshwaram, Tharangabadi, Tanjavur, Kumbakonam, Shri Rangapatnam, Thiruhiyani, Palam, and Sri Perambudur. Kerala is one state where tourism is looking up. With the upgradation of the Thiruvananthapuram Airport, a privately funded airport at Kochi, joint ventures in hotel sector between Kerala Tourism Development Corporation and the Taj Group of Hotels and Welcome Groups have helped to establish the primary stage of infrastructure development in the state. The success of tourism in the state will ultimately depend on the planned growth of the infrastructure. However, given the resource crunch, the selective development should be done to ensure effective and sustained development of the destinations. Island resorts are to be developed in Lakshadweep and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Here the problem lies in getting clearance from the Ministry of Environment. These islands can be made accessible by air or by sea and the developer has to set up the entire infrastructure including non-conventional sources of energy, drinking water plants, sewage pipe etc because these are islands which are surrounded by sea water and all these things have to be developed within the islands to make them self sufficient for energy, water, sewage etc. Now this raises the question of economic viability of the project since the government's investment will be land given on long lease the private players have to pitch in to develop the infrastructure one way out is to use luxury ships both to transport and accommodate tourists so that environmental damage can be contained and high level of investment on infrastructure can be reduced This way we also do not harm the environmental aspects of these islands. Garbage disposable can also be contained so the islands and the seas will not be polluted. But making luxury ship private sector has to come up with lots and lots of investment. So after having a discussion on the bottlenecks now we will present you the alternative viewpoint on infrastructure development. Tourism of the rich to the countries of the poor does not automatically lead to the solution of economic problems or developmental objectives. In fact, it is the policy maker, the provider of services and the tourists who benefit most and profit from tourism in the most undeveloped destinations of the world. Where no industry survives is the tourism industry which survives and gives in the bread and butter to the local population. The reasons for this are the global division between the rich and the poor, 
different cultures, attitudes and values, different ways of living and working. In the decade of 80s, tourism related problems emerged because of serious cases of wrong development and in extreme cases it led to number 1 impairment of the life support of native population groups because of the construction of tourism facilities particularly fishing agriculture toddy tapping etc so people started leaving their own traditional businesses to venture into tourism and of course the lifeline of the traditional system of self sustainability lost its way people became more and more dependent on things to be brought from outside wherever tourism has developed Number 2 environmental damage like bulldogging sand dunes polluting sea water cutting trees to build roads lay other infrastructure of deforestation for the construction of accommodation airstrips etc has led to a lot of debate being going on that we are developing promotion we are promoting tourism or developing tourist destination at what cost is it sustainable it has to be otherwise the future generations will ruin that the place was developed for tourism purposes Number 3 sex tourism and child prostitution which brings diseases like AIDS to the third world countries where people cannot cope with them because the health and awareness infrastructure does not cover their needs it leads to cultural shock demonstration effects which do irreparable damage to the faulty and community relationship it is a local population who starts imitating what the tourists are doing they start imitating the cultures that the tourists bring in leaving their own culture at bay which in the long run may affect the cultural threads of the society at large of the host destination number 5 tourist related crimes like eve teasing drug trafficking prostitution all these things also increase with the onset of the tourists and the tourists creating a demand for such type of things supply mechanism automatically comes into picture then comes the resistance by the victims of tourism to the developments from above which are often not compatible with the reality of the local people and are certainly not implemented with their participation Developing concepts of tourism that will be environmentally and culturally sustainable over a long period and which should control and guide investments with greater responsibility and respect for people at the destination. It is interesting to note that anti-tourism activists and networks have been successful in sensitizing tourists from rich countries but have been unable to make their own governments become more responsible and open in their planning for tourism development we have seen a lot of anti tourism movement in places all across the globe now places like barcelona in spain venice in italy there is a long massive movement anti tourist because the local population is feeling the heat of it and with the onset of more and more tourists local population doesn't get to survive well the tourist one day of fun is a routine activity for the local population so venice is a classic example where the population has dwindled from 1 lakh to 55000 only and it receives at least four times the number of local residents as tourists in a particular day now various surveys of tourists indicate that they are willing to participate in holidays more in step with the local conditions including the consumption of local produce the policy makers and the industry while playing lip service to alternative concepts continue to advocate the kind of tourism that has already polluted the beaches of bali and thailand one of the beaches in thailand has been closed for 3 years so that it can recoup and recover and again become viable for bringing tourists These all brought about conflicts and resistance to the growth of golf tourism focused on the evils of sex tourism child prostitution etc in india the industry in a way promotes these silent evils since we never study tourism impacts it's a rare thing that tourism impacts are studied at a particular place and corrective measures are taken as a young boy from lakshadweep said island people like to have a protective cover between them and the outsider like a mask so tourist is taken as an outsider and they want a protective layer like a mask between them and the tourists coming to their place the tourism lobby also projects only a positive image of tourism in justifying the expenditure on tourism and legitimizing the kind of activities that are taking place under the umbrella of tourism It is also known from experience that tourist succeeds only when the gap between the tourist and the local person is not very wide. The greater the difference in terms of income, access to resources, lifestyle, culture, the benefits of tourism are reduced. 
Secondly, in the national action plan or the industry support that this new vision for tourism development is projecting, there is no mention of carrying capacity, a concept that every destination, every location or every site has to determine for itself. If we do not take care of the carrying capacity, then the tourism industry will suffer in the long run. The sites will kill themselves as sites for tourism, which is very, very harmful. So we have to keep this concept of carrying capacity into mind. The carrying capacity is not just physical carrying capacity. It is also social carrying capacity. It is also cultural carrying capacity. So that the society, the culture, the threats of the society are not negatively impacted by the coming tourists to their destination. Now these considerations should include number one the degree of openness to the local social and settlement patterns the infrastructure needs of the local population priority these should have over the infrastructure needs to be created from the base of tourism the social and recreational needs of the local community and the similar needs of the tourists if the gap is too wide tourism should not be pushed how much income revenue and employment will tourism generate for the local people a good question to be asked in the context of over tourism today as well this should have priority over the foreign exchange earnings that central government can earn to improve their balance of payments position the average indian is not linked to or involved in the economy where foreign exchange earnings are either meaningful or beneficial to him this would involve an assessment of local problems and their solution via tourism development which must be evaluated before plans are made or implemented the weakness of the infrastructure argument must be evaluated against the ground realities of the people's lives and expectations rather than those of the tourists alone. A classic example would be where there was a project in Manali area to build up a ropeway but the local population resisted it to the hilt and finally that project was a non-starter because the local population was against that development of infrastructure. As we can see, the concept of infrastructure means different things to different people. In trying to solve macroeconomic problems, the government often misses the microeconomic realities. The travel trade is in the business of profit. Of course, they are in the business to make profit, make money, and their investment in tourism is purely consumer-oriented. They ignore the fact that often tourism kills itself because in the long run, if there is too much of tourism, there is mass tourism to a particular destination, then tourism kills tourism. They become the handmaidens of destruction because travel agents, tour operators are linked to the international system and to be in business, they have to fall in line with the mainstream values of the tourism system, which is in turn to earn more and more profits. However, tourism does have creative possibilities if one approaches the issues raised in the critiques with awareness, with concern and of course with a lot of sensitivity. Tourism as an advanced form of consumerism depends on distant and unknown others to supply the needs of the tourists, whose money commands governments and the trade to develop tourist products, often at the expense of the resident. This dependence on money creates a culture in which individuals become bonded to the market, which is often called free, and the consumer's choice of freedom. In the industrialized countries, few of the basic needs are satisfied locally. Items of daily consumption are rarely produced close to the place where they are to be consumed. Household goods, shelter, transport, leisure, entertainment and healthcare all have their location in communities which are not going to be able to use them. The privileged of the planet can alone have access to such products. This form of free market enterprise demands an infrastructure that is not only coming at a heavy price but also putting pressure on the ecology and the environment. So let us sum up. The concept of infrastructure in tourism has different connotations in relation to different services. However, there is a distinct relationship between infrastructure, quality of tourism, product or service. Both the public as well as the private sectors have their role in infrastructure development. There are certain weaknesses of infrastructure when compared to international standards that are determined basically from the point of view of European or American tourists. However, there should not be a mad race to imitate the Western model with only high spenders in mind. Infrastructural development should take place keeping in view the sustainability aspect and avoiding negative impacts on the environment or the host population. 
So to sum up the bottlenecks and shortcomings, organized tourism is a recent phenomenon in India. Due to negligible share of India's share in the world market, the travel trade has identified several problem areas. Mass tourism is important, but a country like India cannot afford to spread its resources for tourism too thinly. To give a value for money, products that will be not only competitive but also superior, we will have to look in the following areas. I am just trying to sum up the things. Number of destinations to be brought on the tourism map has to be increased. Facilitations like visa, immigration, customs have to be developed. Airports and the facilities and staff training should go hand in hand. Roads, surface transport of standard size air conditioned coaches, tourists, cars, taxis are to be ensured. Wayside facilities on roads like cafes, restrooms, petrol stations, repair shop, etc. have to be done. Hygiene is one of the most important aspects. So hygiene in all matters, both personal as well as in public. Then accommodation facilities should be available right from a youth hostler to an elite class high spender. Water, electricity has to be available and safety measures have to be taken care of. Then promote trade fairs and reciprocal festivals. While the trade supports the new approach to limit travel circuits, India need to improve upon the airports at tourist destinations with the introduction of air taxis and more and more private airlines. India does offer a variety of attractions. It is using its resources very ineffectively though. Part of the problem is identified in the shortcomings of the approach adopted to market the tourist products overseas. Now to sum up the alternative viewpoint, tourism of the rich to the countries of the poor does not automatically lead to solution of economic problems or deployment objectives. The global division between rich and poor is there. We have different cultures, attitudes and values. So there is a clash between the culture, the attitudes and values of the host and the guest population. Then the ways of living and working are different. Right? It is impairment of the life support of native population groups because of the construction of tourism facilities, particularly like fishing, agriculture, etc. Environmental damage like pollution of seawater, cutting of the trees to build roads, etc. Then sex tourism, child prostitution which bring in dreaded diseases like AIDS, cultural shock, demonstration effect which does an irreparable damage to the faulty and the community relationships, tourist related crimes like eve teasing, snatching, drug trafficking etc. Anti-tourism activities and networks have been successful in sensitizing tourists from rich countries but have not been able to make their own governments become more responsible and open in their planning for tourism development. Hence, we require a balanced approach for tourism development which does not kill the basic tenets of the society of the host population wherein it provides all the services, all the facilities required for a tourist to have a pleasant experience. So this is all for today. Thank you so much.